Turn your Bible to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Those of us that traveled in from different locations, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Please, you must realize that the slogan is minimum comfort. Minimum comfort. Maybe you may not have the kind of accommodation you would have wanted. Maybe when you eat, There are several delicacies that you feast upon in your private quarters. But the slogan for this camp is minimum comfort. Philippians chapter 2. There is a mighty event orchestrated by the Spirit of God that is about to take place in our generation. And for this, each and every one of us must be equipped to be responsive to the responsibilities that the Holy Spirit will have us pioneer within the scope of our localities and our estates. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, beginning from verse 12 and verse 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And he tells us why. Hallelujah. Um, doctor, I hope your night rest was good. The slogan is minimum comfort, minimum comfort. All right? You are welcome. Grace, you are okay. All right. Now, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not so much as in my presence anymore, but much more in my absence. What's the meaning of that? You have obeyed, and your obedience is much more in my absence. That's the proof of a teaching ministry. A teaching ministry is supposed to set up a system such, such that the, in the absence of the teacher, the system can still run. That is one of the evidences of a well-ordered house. That people are not doing what they do for eye service. They are doing it as a proof of their equipment, a proof of their capacity, which came through meticulous teaching. Hallelujah. Now, you see, the principle of the preservation of the truth of God is based on heritage. Can you tell your neighbor heritage? Because the way the kingdom operates from generation to generation is that we are enjoined to instruct disciples and those disciples are also enjoined to bring the same things we have taught unto faithful men. Paul says, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses commit the same to faithful men that can teach others also if you check that sequence you'll find there are four generations captured in every call four key generations he said the things that you have heard of me that you have heard of me among many witnesses he said commit this to faithful men which can teach others also so me you faithful men and others forms four generations so the impact of what you are doing is supposed to colonize four generations and every move of god are you yeah are you here you are not here 
how many of you were part of fcs at one point or the other in your life fellowship of christian students now i want from this side you were part of fcs at one point yeah okay you were part of fcs were you part of fcs at any point secondary school a revival that you cannot sustain for four generations will be lost as powerful as fcs was it was only able to drive it for three generations you have you visited fcs platforms most fcs platforms currently the thing that was there before is no longer present because it lacked the momentum to drive it across four generations if you drive it across four generations it becomes a system on earth it becomes what a system so the proof of my teaching ministry is not so much of what you do when i'm around is what you do when i'm not around you see I'm, I'm delighted that you all adhere to the commandments the instructions not as much as when i'm present but i've seen that you have sustained the same protocol much more in my absence you know in the last in the last um the last few years in terms of capacity building and uh, ministry training the hallmark of ministry training revealed that a pastor should not be absent from his sunday service because sunday service is market day now so if the guy is in europe he needs to take he needs to be on a flight on saturday night and he's, he needs to be back to base in the night so that he can appear on on sunday morning he understands what i'm talking about but if you are running that system and we know that we will not live on earth forever you don't have an opportunity to hear the feedback that takes place when you are not around it means you are not running a system that is likely to survive two generations most of our ministries here in nigeria cannot survive two generations even the best of them that have very shrewd administrative structures they can't survive two generations because the man must be in church on sunday morning meanwhile paul said you people have kept the commandment in my absence and that's the proof that you have taught that's the proof that you have instructed if the people that you are teaching cannot continue doing what you are doing in your absence shut the ministry down go and seek the face of god because most of what we have doesn't have the capacity to transcend generations meanwhile god's thinking about his agenda upon the face of the earth is about nations and generations but we are the denomination and so our mode of thinking doesn't have the capacity to transcend a generation meanwhile your call in order for it to become a system must have the momentum to go beyond the corridors of at least four generations how many of you have read watchman knee's book watchman knee you know he died in 1952 But his, his books are still potent. In fact, you don't need to meet Watchman if you have met his books. That's the proof of a teaching ministry. It is life applicable even without the presence of the teacher. So if what you are teaching, the proof of it, stay away for long. And God helped me, gave me the privilege to do that. I was away from here for seven years. So if what I taught was not life applicable, if what I taught was not reproducible, are you with me? If it was not reproducible, then we will not have a ministry here again. I was away for seven years. That means there were many Sunday services, market days that I was not available. 
but the proof of what I taught was tested for seven years. I was only into marriage for four years before I separated from my wife for seven years. So the things we put together in four years was tested for seven years. I still have a home today because that thing that we agreed is worked. If you leave church for six months, will that church still be running? If it will still run, then you have a ministry. If it will not run, it means you have not you have been preaching, you have not been teaching, you have not taught anything. We 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 administer the questionnaire. Are you with me? You are not with me. You don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. We administer the questionnaire. What was the questionnaire? Um, do you believe in the virgin birth of Jesus? That's the first question. Are you with me? Seventy percent of the people that brought that filled the questionnaire. 70% of them don't believe in that. I'm just trying to show you the fate of Christianity in our lifetime. Do you believe in the resurrection? 60% of people, they say, well, um. meanwhile, the Bible articulates that if we do not believe, if Jesus had, was not raised from the dead, then our faith is vain. What I did was that I, all the articles of our belief system that if you don't believe you are not a christian i coin them into questions and then we use them to administer that questionnaire and the feedback that came suggested that if so, if nothing drastic happens to christianity in the next 25 years our christian our children will bow down to a different god the reason is because of this market day philosophy in ministry where people people are not allowed to practice what they have been taught in the absence of the trainer meanwhile paul said hallelujah you are not with me you know for the rest of my life what i want to dedicate my life to doing is to providing platforms for the preservation of christianity that is my next mission that i will do to old age how can we preserve christianity just came back from brazil and i discovered the gay movement is on the rise i mean female female male male female female male male female 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 now are you with me meanwhile some of those countries were held square by christianity for a very long time the gay movement just came and it has polarized sociology it means there is something wrong with our capacity building approach and if we don't do something drastic about our current situation christianity will die in the next few years hallelujah on your Bible, yes, are you there? He said, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So, he was talking to people that have stayed on his teaching, that were practicing his teaching. Hallelujah! People that were what practicing now those of you that traveled in from different places you know what god has committed to us as a ministry which is the rebirth of the gospel of the kingdom and the administration of the spirit of revival which is that which god is doing in our current time the spirit of revival the spirit of just men made perfect that have labored men that labor all right concerning their territories men like john knox 
men that labored in intercession concerning the preservation of the heritage of God in their territories, I, I saw their spirit crying to God to bring to pass the things that they prayed for in their lifetime. All right? And there was, there had to be, a, a committee was constituted in heaven. And this committee was constituted to ensure that the cry that was coming through the spirits of those men concerning the promises that God gave them in their lifetime, why they labored at intercessors for nations and for territories, those promises must come to pass. But God will need a special kind of people to actualize the prayers and the expectation of our great fathers. Not nominal Christians. But a new breed without greed, the radical opposition against unrighteousness. Men in whom the glory of God has found a sitting place. All right? I hope you know that practice is superior to learning. If I teach you about prayer, and when you begin to practice prayer, your practice of prayer is superior to being in the prayer class. The people that Paul was addressing were people that were engaged in the practice of the things that they were taught. So Paul was addressing disciples that were practicing what he was teaching. The first instruction that Paul gave them, you are not with me. Are you still, are you still here? The first instruction that Paul gave them was, number one, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. And this instruction that he gave them, he took the next verse to explain it. Walk out what? Now, you need to be careful with the word that Paul used. The instruction he gave was what? walk out walk it out the only basis where walk out is going to be relevant is because something was initially walked in now if you don't know what was walked in you will not know how to what to walk out In any place, in any generation, when Christianity dies, are you, are you here? You know what happened, what makes it die? Preachers begin to emphasize things that were not walked in. Right? I, we are from different denominations, so um, I don't know what to say that somebody will not be offended. Listen to me, listen, listen to me. When Christianity dies in a certain generation, the reason why it is dying is because preachers are emphasizing things that are not worked in. This message that Paul is bringing to these people, yes, ushers, let people sit down with, see, see. Quick, don't allow them to stand so that we can finish the service and run away before the crowd comes. <laughs> we know <laughs> we know we can manage <laughs> more than a certain number in this place. So let's finish before that time. Before this. Are you with me? Something initially was what was walked in, and Paul was now telling them, You Walk out your salvation. You see, something was walked in, you walk it out. Alright? And when you do so, do it with fear and trembling. And I will tell you why he gave that instruction. Because he explains himself more elaborately in the next verse. First of all, Paul was not talking... To nominal Christians, he was talking to practitioners, people that were in the practice 
of the things he has taught them even without supervision now listen listen we are achieving nothing we are achieving nothing if all we are doing is is show business and performance the proof that something is actually taking place is when the default mode of the people that we have trained is consistent with the practice that emphasizes that which have been worked into their spirit so paul was addressing people that were enterprising people that are qualified to receive inheritance from his ministry people that he was trusting god that will be such as we continue what he was doing while he was alive these are the people he's telling this the first instruction he gives them is what walk out your salvation and when you are doing so you do it with what with fear and with trembling walk out your salvation please help me preach the message to your neighbor walk out your salvation hallelujah walk out your salvation pastor like you i grew up in the success motivational prosperity um platform that's that's where the the training i received was in success motivation and prosperity that's my training in ministry with but you know what i in my own personal study of the bible i found out that that was not the reading of the apostolic body me i found that i believe that that was not the reading i'm not saying it's not biblical i'm not saying prosperity is not biblical i'm saying that the purpose and the goal of apostolic ministry in the bible was not to make men rich i had to find out what exactly what the spirit of the first messengers of this kingdom enterprise because if i in this congregation now if i administer a question here the feedback might be discouraging it means that in the last 35 years in the nigerian church the average minister doesn't understand the burden of the apostolic company the god of the bible the god like that men like abraham labored with that god are you with me are you with me he prospers people prosperity is the result of alignment is the result of alignment because the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and the things that the gentiles seek will be added unto you you realize that prosperity is an addition which results from the fact that we are consumed in the pursuit of a kingdom vision a kingdom dream the first time jesus in all of his ministry used the word first in terms of priority it had to do with the kingdom that the goal of your life is to fulfill the purpose of god the will of god as you discern it in the spirit that's what you will be spent on earth to actualize and unfortunately for us he said you will have to seek the kingdom mm. it's, these issues are not readily available the reason why you have to seek it is because that kingdom is in the spirit it is not in Wuruku market if it were in Wuruku market we would have taken a stroll from this hall down to the market and we'll get it but the kingdom happens to be in the spirit and you have to seek the position of the kingdom as it has to do with your unique destiny that is the purpose for which you live on it it is hidden in the spirit you have to seek it many things are easy seeking is not mm, it's not because it is not 
there are very ready alternatives that you can squander your life in pursuing that are easier for you to handle but it would have amounted to an utter waste because you did not find in the spirit that for which jesus apprehended you in the covenant of redemption are you with me you might be offended with my talk but if you go go for the next 10 years you will find out that i said the truth i've seen people before that came here and when we showed them the scripture they, they, they left and insulted me 10 years later they came back they say well We, we found out by experience and you know when they come back some come they come back deaf crippled afflicted because they learned by experience satan has touched them are you doing all right so what you were called to do upon the face of the earth is in the spirit there is a kingdom that you can only touch its reality in the spirit called the holy ghost right and that kingdom runs a very terrible agenda of secrecy such that it is only this holy spirit that has that is a chartered spirit that has the capacity to unveil the things that are held up in that kingdom so any believer that is not trained to seek god will waste because the things that pertain to your destiny are not commonplace they are sought out hallelujah you have ever used a search machine before you have used google before you use yahoo search before the reason why you are using a search is because the thing is not commonplace a system that can sort out many forms of algorithms must be engaged in order to bring out the issue of interest from its hiding place huh? i submit to you that there is a such facility that is stronger than google the bible says that the spirit is the one that searches all things and the extent of his such capacity is even to the degree to which he can search into the deep things of god are you here now if you don't get the such results of your own life anything you do outside of that is a way see spirits are you here we must understand what can what is what can impress a spirit especially a spirit that was not created that is the source of all things what do you think can impress here that you bought a car that you just married last week <laughs> The only thing that can impress him is that you were diligent enough not to assume but you came to him to seek to seek to ask him what is the meaning of my life and for you to do that it means you have honored him by expressing the fact that you believe in him and it happens to be that one of god's obsessions is that he wants to be believed when you show consistent effort that you believe in him enough to ask him what exactly is his agenda concerning your life you have engaged the search protocol the search protocol will take you through a process but it will bring you to a point where you stumble on the essence of that which was walked into you because if we want to work out our salvation we must collide with the essence of that which was worked into us one of the things worked into you is grace hallelujah the bible says having received having received that's paul speaking the grace of god i have continued until this day so one of the things worked into you is grace the Bible also says in the book of Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 uh, this scripture is escaping my brain Amen 
Uh -huh. He said, how much more they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life by one Christ Jesus. All right? The grace was worked into you. And on the strength of the grace that was worked into you, there's an expectation from heaven that that grace is sufficient to make you reign in life. The theology, are you with me? The theology of the victorious life. The investment that God made in your spirit, by which and with which he is expecting you to live in victory, was an administration of grace that he made available to you. And if you understand the workings of that grace, the outshoot of that investment should be that you were able to live a life of dominion over circumstances, over situations, over demons, over devils. That's the expectation. If, if it's true that you worked it out, then the most natural expression of that which was worked into you is, is dominion. That's the most natural expression. The most natural expression of that which was worked into you is what? Is dominion. It's a walk out your salvation with fear and with trembling. Amen. Well, verse 12 is not my emphasis. My emphasis is in verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 is my emphasis. And my emphasis is the explanation that Paul gives to give us perspective about the first instruction that he gave us the first instruction that he gave us is walk out your what salvation and he says we should do that with fear and with trembling i don't have time to walk on that scripture are you here then he now explained further the explanation is what i want to teach on this morning for it is god this is his explanation for it is god that what that walketh. now you must know where god walks you know a mechanic has a workshop a doctor has a place where he walks the name of that place is called a hospital a medical doctor all right there is a place that god walks and the bible says that this our god he has decided to walk in us that's his workshop his workshop is where for it is god that walketh in us so if you are looking for the works of god if you are looking for the activities of god the activities of god and the address of god is the spirit of a believer that is recreated are you with me now it is god that worketh in us and there are a few enterprises that god is involved in in our hearts first of all the bible says he he worketh in us both to will that's number one and then to do meanwhile are you here the reason for which we are in this scripture is because paul says we should work out our salvation but i'll need to show you what is worked in and how that which is work in operates then you'll know how to work it out hallelujah it is god that walketh in us now to avoid distraction in this catalyst service can you switch off your phone and if you are using your phone as a bible can you put it on flight mode so that you don't so many people travel all over the world to come here not to listen to your ringtone travel from saudi arabia to come here that your ringtone is is it's a body now already it's a body Say body. 
Hallelujah. Now, I'd like us to take that scripture from the NIV version. Who has the NIV version? Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Do you know that the Holy Spirit woke me up in the night to give me this scripture? He said, wake up. Wake up. You see, when the word of the Lord comes to you, is one of the signs of spiritual health. Another sign of spiritual health is that when you do wrong, you will feel bad. At any point in time, when you do wrong, you don't feel bad. Just you need to go to the hospital of the intensive care unit of the grace of God, admit yourself, and put drip. You are almost off the scale by yourself. That means nobody knows your condition, but you decide to take a fast. And if I a preacher, stop accepting invitations and go to the intensive care unit of the grace of God because you are not in spiritual health. So the word of the Lord came to me this morning. He woke me up. The sleep was deep, but that word, that word, that word. And what was it? Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. For it is God that walked in you but to will and to do according to his good pleasure yes niv version of that scripture wait i want to get it straight give her a microphone the, the, i want you to understand the scripture first before we begin the journey if you meet a practitioner of wizardry and that practitioner wizardry wants to help you he will give you a charm he will give you an amulet he'll give you something to tie on your waist say bath with it don't even remove it when you are going to take your bath because the moment you remove it you become visible the best the devil can give you is to something is something to put on yourself or something to carry in your hand but god he, he walked in you And we must understand how to administer things that are in us. Because if deliverance is going to come to Jacob, because there's a promise that on Mount Zion, there will be deliverance. If deliverance will come to Jacob, there must be one among the sons of Jacob, the saviors of Zion, that must have discovered the technology of how to to walk out the things that have been walked in as long as we lack the technology of bringing into manifestation such things as were walked into us then our day of deliverance will be postponed it is god that what that walk it hey before this conference ends god will walk I Kaboli Mahaita. I've been to places before I went to preach. Where was that? Somewhere in the north, I've forgotten. Then they sent a woman from River, River Niger. A mermaid, a mermaid, turned into a human being and came for the meeting. And the reason was they sent her to kill me. Oh, then I took scriptures and I began to teach. And then the one that walked in me now began to do a walk that the woman that was sent was not aware of. All your problems will come from the external, but it is God that walked. What his response to the external things will come from where? Oh my, oh my. And I was preaching, and then the Holy Ghost became excited. Can you tell when he stands up in you? If you can't tell, then you've been looking at the stars. Redemption will not come from the stars. It will come from within. Hallelujah. I, I was preaching. He became excited. He stood up. And when he stood up, he now pointed like this. He pointed like this. He pointed like this. I said, I, it was between me and him. Even the person that invited me didn't know what was going on where within. So when he began to point here and he didn't tell me why he was pointing here so it is it, is it's advisable for you to move migrate in the direction of where he was pointing and i began to migrate 
I didn't know that I was going straight to where the woman was. When I went there, and I said, oh, the Holy Ghost. And I left there again. He, he, he. I got to the pulpit. He still pointed, still pointed, still pointed. So I was doing my preaching. People thought what I was, all I was doing was preaching. Meanwhile, beyond the preaching, I was following a navigation system. Because something was at work within me. And when I got there the third time, the woman, oh, I don't know what threw her off balance. What was working inside of me was gentle, but his manifestation was violent. Now, so if you are going to be a savior that will come from Zion, you must understand that a little sign in the spirit might mean the, the, the noise of an abundance of rain. Sign. Because it is God. Imagine. Moses just took a rod and he stretched it over a river. He huh? looks foolish. And that was the natural explanation of how the Red Sea parted. Not the supernatural explanation, but the natural. Because in the book of Acts, the Bible, uh, Psalms, the Bible says, By the blast of thy nostrils, you parted the Red Sea. So when Moses now did his, his rod that his God sneeze. <laughs> Is God. <laughs> Meanwhile, the workings of God in Moses was stretch forth your road, stretch forth your road, stretch forth your road. And the mighty powers of heaven went to work because a man. So, you see, the operation of God in Moses was gentle. But what evolved from that gentility was a massive tsunami that was able to keep the sea parted sufficiently for three million men. But it is gone. So by the time I reached where she was, the third time, the turbulence, the, something struck the woman. First of all, she fell off the chair, and then she rose up, trying to strike me. I, I didn't move. I didn't move. See, Hallelujah, because I didn't even know she wanted to strike me. That's why I didn't move. Somebody will say, "Car is a bold preacher." The, the truth is, I didn't know she wanted to strike. Me. I was, I was totally unaware of what was happening. It was a reaction that was taking place. So she stood up to kill. I was just standing and watching. And when she stood up, they, I don't know what threw her from that place. From here, she now landed here. When she landed there, you know, the, the, the message that was preaching had, has ended at uh, that time. He screamed. I mean, you know, a human being that is using the lungs cannot scream that long. Scream, scream, scream. And then shouted. When she shouted, she stood on her feet again and then tried to kill the preacher. I, I was I was still standing. She got very close, then that thing threw her out, then blood came out of her mouth. Oh. Meanwhile, that woman has come to that church and killed people and went for free. As at the time I came for that service, the reason why they invited me was because people were dying and they did not have any solution to me. And the message I preached was not related to death and resurrection. Because the God that was walking in me, he gave me what to see. And the thing I was saying was not related to the issue on ground, but that was his own way of addressing the matter. May you trust the God that walketh. God that what that walk it in you she began to confess that they sent her for river niger that they gave her powers here powers there and you know i don't like that that stuff i say shut up there then we started the deliverance her bodily color began to change during the deliverance yeah do you know pastor do you know that there are some deliverances you will do? The person came into the hall fat. When you finish it, the person's weight will significantly reduce. You may not know that some of those fatness is because they, they have stored some demonic things in the, in the belly. The demons came out of that lady. And then I was looking for 
the script like this where I wrote my, my sermon. I couldn't find it. And then the God that was working in me began to teach without a script. And it, it taught better than what I wrote on my script. And when I finished teaching, I now found my script. Because it is what? It's God. In theology, we are trained to do, to make messages, prepare messages. And it is not advisable for you not to have one. But after doing your message and your symmetry, Bible symmetry and all of that, it is God that what? Now, let's get the reading. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good pleasure. Mm. Purpose. All right, so God is, he works. Now, I want to get another, another um, meaning for the word will. If you have an, a translation that gives us another word for will, it is God that worketh to us both to will. Is your own different? Is it different? Your own is different. All right, give her the microphone. For God is working in you, mm -hmm. giving you the desire. Good. What translation is that? NLT. New now, you see. Are you here now the god in you in his walking he imparts desires to you now just like i was on the pulpit and then he imparted the desire that i should go this way are you here the moment i decided decided to flow in the line of that desire the power to deliver the woman was available Do you understand my obedience to that desire activated the angel that was released in the realm of the spirit to bind the demon that the woman came with. As long as I refuse to synchronize with that desire, I have kept that the angel that was sent bound. The passcode to activate the angel was not, was not available as long as I was not willing to respond to what? To the desire. Yes, go on. Give, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now, so it is God that provides the desire and then God that provides the power for us to actualize that desire. How many of you have desired that you have a robust prayer life? But it never came to pass. <laughs> With the desire. With the desire is the power for actualization. There is something that that desire will prompt you to do. Once you do it, you have released the power to perform the counsel that is captured in the desire. And in that performance is also the release of the external infrastructures that are released from heaven to take care of external situations in terms of circumstances, in terms of external factors. Now, let us begin the journey properly. This is Paul's testimony. Galatians chapter 1. We see Apostle Paul's testimony. A testimony about his conversion. And all the other factors. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 15 Galatians 1 15 are you there but when he pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But order of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. 21. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Cilicia, of Syria and Cilicia. 
was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. Verse 23 and 24. But when they heard, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith which he once destroyed. What was his testimony? Verse 24. And they glorified God. the location of that God they glorified was in Paul. They glorified God. Where? Now, the question is this. The God in you, the one you have been carrying, the measure of God that was bequeathed to you because of your faith in the immortal, even Jesus Christ, has that God manifested enough for people to see? What will preserve Christianity in a certain generation is that the God in you leaps out, it comes out to perform a feat because humankind will always identify God leaping out of a man's heart and they glorified what God in me not God in Bonke there's a way God manifested through Bonke and there's a way he wants to manifest through you the ones that testified were the ones that saw God in him manifest for it is God that walketh in us hallelujah 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 all right during the times i have opportunity to teach i was uh, in, the, in the catalyst service i'll be talking about the workings of god in us the workings it's a very long teaching but as far as opportunity we have for us we will be walking uh, along this line isaiah chapter there's an elder i'm seeing outside there usher if the elder came for this meeting bring him here such a man should not be standing okay isaiah chapter 32 verse 17 let's begin the journey when you give your life to christ they, they, they are initial things that god does in you and i need to explain that and then as you progress in god the things that god does begins to multiply as you progress in God and you must be able to identify those things that God does in the progression in which they come hallelujah so what we are trying to do is an attempt uh, for everyone to receive confirmation and confidence on the activity of the spirit that is within upon our hearts operational upon our hearts if God um, will carry out a major thing upon the face of the earth then the believers have to be educated as to how to translate the workings of god which is within them and bringing them into manifestation but first of all you must identify the work of the spirit in your heart then in subsequent lectures we'll teach how to translate those workings into physical manifestations and if time will afford we'll have a practical session established on this theory that i'm building at this point isaiah chapter 32 isaiah chapter 32 okay okay maybe we'll do um, wait okay let's do romans chapter 5 first then we'll go to isaiah chapter 32 we'll look at the legal aspects and the living aspects correspondingly so that it will be easy for you to comprehend amen sorry those of us that are standing outside all the seats that would have been available have been moved to the crusade ground uh, the lord will help us in jesus name uh, i saw paul bango somewhere where are you paul okay you may wish to leave that place come this way so that uh, at least one more person can sit down romans chapter 5 before i read romans chapter 5 i need to show you the studio god is an eternal personality 
Is that true? He existed before creation began. And the work of God did not start in time. The work of God started in eternity. And the book of Romans gives us a good idea of God's work scope. Are you with me? The Bible says that though that he those that he did for, for no, he also did predestinate. So there is a foreknowing aspect, there's a predestination aspect. And those that he predestinated, those the same he called. So we have foreknowing, we have predestination, we have calling. And those he called, he justified. And justification is the first aspect of organic salvation. Now we explain that. All right, those he justified, them he also glorified. Now, justification is the first step in organic salvation. Organic salvation began with justification. The proof of justification was the regeneration of your human spirit. Are you with? The result of justification was the regeneration of your human spirit. And when your human spirit was regenerated, then a process of transformation began. And this transformation is also organic. And, and the explanation of transformation is that God wants to undo the things uh, that the fall has done in you so that you can really be a new creation in all its forms and in all its fashions. So we have a transformation effect. And I will tell you how that works. And the transformation is not open-ended. The transformation is consistent with the need to conform to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. And then all of these things are ongoing in your Christian experience and ultimately you are going to be glorified. And it was Jesus that showed us the example of the fact that it was possible for humankind to be glorified. Because after that Jesus had decided to take on the form of man. Are you with me? In his resurrection he was able to defy death which was one of the quagmires of man. And in his bodily human makeup he ascended into glory that is to show us the hope of humankind and the, the final destination of humankind is glory and the example of jesus is the most valid basis of our reference in this regard i came to tell you today that the foreknowing process took place before time i also came to tell you that the predestination process took place before time I also came to tell you today that the calling process took place before time. The first thing that took place in time is your justification. Now, I need to explain a few factors. And that's why I said I need to give this explanation before we go to the book of Romans 5. Are you, if you are still with me, say amen. amen. According to scripture, you existed as a seed of eternity before you were formed in your mother's womb. In the aquarium of life, there was an aquarium of reality in god's studio and you existed in that in that context it was from that context that you were released to come into a woman's womb by the ordination of god consistent with a certain season and a certain generation and a certain timing but you existed even before that reality and we have that understanding from the book of jeremiah chapter one where the bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb i knew thee and before thou camest forth, I sanctified and ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. Your purpose was already preordained before you showed up. God did not start thinking about what he will use you to do when you arrived. So obviously, you cannot be a product of accident. I, hallelujah. Whenever you have the opportunity to speak to an atheist that believes that there is no God, look for a printout like this. Those of you in Europe... And in Saudi Arabia, look for a printout like this and ask the person, can this printout come without a designer? <laughs> you don't quote scripture, just is it possible to have this printout without somebody walking behind the scene? This is reasoning. Is it possible? Okay, since it's not possible. It happens to be that the reason why it's not possible is because it, you need a designer to do this 
and everything about your cell your cell is a machine hmm? in fact every organ of your body has a time clock and the world